How's it going everyone? Today we got a video on 8 gigabytes of RAM versus 16 gigabytes of RAM for gaming. Uh, we will be doing 16 gigabytes of RAM first, which is currently in the PC. Uh, the PC that uh, you see right here, there's the monitor that I built a while ago. I will be showing the case that I built. It has its own fan, it has its own fan filter, it's all powered there. Um, works great. Uh, I've been testing it for a while now. I'm liking it. I can move around a lot easier. It stands wherever I want it to. It's kind of nice. Uh, but there it is. It's on right now. Uh, the PC case is the P100 Antec case. It is a silent type case. It has 16 gigs of RAM right now in it. The CPU is an i7-3770K with a Z77 Sabertooth motherboard. Uh, it's being cooled by a Thermaltake Peerless Assassin 120. Uh, great uh, CPU cooler for anyone that has a decent sized case and wants some really good cooling. It cools up to 200 watts. Uh, I've tested it and it works just fine. Uh, the GPU that I'm going to be using is an EVGA. Uh, GTX 1080 Ti with this pair the i7 3770k and this GPU with 16 gigs of RAM it is a fairly common um, PC build actually uh, it's got a high-end GPU the CPU still works fine has four cores eight threads if I wanted I can overclock it to 5.2 gigahertz uh, not on this cooler. I can go to 5 gigs on this cooler uh, right now it is stock. Uh, I'd rather just leave it stock for now and uh, we'll do some tests from there. Uh, again, we're going to start off with uh, 16 gigs of uh, RAM. Uh, the GPU has 11 gigs of VRAM, but again, it's not about the, the CPU and the GPU combo. It's about how many frames we're gaining and or losing in games. It could vary on some games. Some games are going to be wanting more than 16 gigs. Uh, so we'll be doing some tests uh, today on 16 versus 8 gigabytes of RAM. This is DDR3 CL10 uh, at uh, 1333 megahertz. If uh, this video gets enough likes and uh, and comments, I will make another video about 8 gigs but versus 16 gigs, but on timed uh, RAM. So it'll be on my own specs of timing for this RAM. Um, right now everything is stock, so uh, let's get her done. All right, so first off, we're gonna be doing CSGO, of course, uh, just using its benchmark tool. Uh, you can download it on Steam. Uh, I've shown other videos on how to download these. Uh, if you wanna do any testing, just go on to Steam, search up FPS benchmark for CS2 and uh, download. Uh, with this here, uh, the first test is 16 gigs of RAM, and the next test will be 8 gigs. Let's see how it does. Remove any doubts in your head. It's us or them. So the test is done. 16 gigs of RAM on an i7 3770K and a 1080i, all on stock. We are hitting 136 frames per second average and our low is 60.9. Not too bad for 16 gigs of RAM. Let's see what 8 does. So with 16 gigs we're getting 138 and a low of 60. With 8 gigs we are getting 116 a low of 68. Now the low of 68 could be that it's uh, signal integrity from the RAM sticks to the CPU and GPU in the game, that's how RAM works, is a little bit better due to the fact it doesn't have to go through so many pins. Um, so like the distance between the contact points to the next uh, uh, RAM stick is uh, get a change in height due to the fact that the contact pins on the RAM slots are going to be a bit taller due to the fact that the contact pins on the RAM are going to be a bit longer. So it will change the signal integrity of the RAM just that little bit. So that's why I'm thinking the 
better lows on just two sticks of RAM versus four is going to be a little bit better, even though you have more RAM. It's just the signal integrity is going to be a little different. You may get more frames average, but your low, your lows, your 1% lows or your 0.1% uh, lows could be higher with only two sticks of RAM. Alright, we got the headset on because I'm going to be doing some drawing. So, with the signal uh, signal integrity of RAM sticks. So you have the RAM sticks. Say four, right? Yeah, four RAM sticks. And they got to go into each of these slots here. Alright, so each of these RAM sticks go into each of these RAM slots here. Now, to make RAM work with more ram sticks what they had to do was change the traces so when you plug in a ram stick you got the traces to make sure that these traces here are the same length they will simply just add in a bunch of um crisscrosses so they'll make they'll make the first one so we'll say ram slot one two three and four They'll make the first one have a lot of zigzags before it gets to the CPU. All right, so say CPU over here. All right, so your first one here that goes in there will have a lot of squiggy lines. And you can look at this. If you look at uh, your motherboard uh, right beside the RAM slots, at the bottom of it, uh, could be on the top of it too, depends on the motherboard. Uh, the the traces that go to it the first one will have a lot of these lines the second one will have a little bit less but it'll equal out to the same distance as this from the third one same thing a little bit less and the last one will just roughly be a straight line straight to the CPU that's why number four here so your fourth slot will be your best ram slot for overclocking so let's say you want you do ddr5 or something like that and you want to get 8000 you just want to see that 8000 mega transfers per second the fourth slot will be your best bet to get that due to the fact the signal integrity is just a straight line you don't have any zigzags you don't have to worry about it going through more traces to get to that cpu it's just a straight path there so usually add in more RAM slots. So if you have two, it'll be in RAM slot two and four. What that does is go through here and here. But the signal has to pass from the very back one through all of them. So whatever you have set for RAM slot four and two, it has RAM slot four has to pass RAM slot three and RAM slot two and RAM slot one to get to the CPU. RAM slot two will have to just go through RAM slot two and RAM slot one to get to the CPU. This is where signal integrity comes into play for RAM. The more RAM slots you have, doesn't matter if, it, if your motherboard supports quad RAM or, or just si uh, dual RAM or just a single rank like you got different ranks for it and again um, memory will have different ranks as well so you have a uh, memory uh, rank one or memory rank one is just give you one-sided uh, memory die with this one rank you can get two rank um, rams and then you got different quad channel and dual channel and single channel motherboards uh, most nowadays will have a dual channel or quad channel just because uh, you'll see quad channel more or less in workstation just due to the fact that I'll have more RAM slots to put into it. So with this test on CS2, just CS2, it showed that four RAM slots, the lows was worse than just two. That's just to, to the fact that it when you add in more slots so into ram slot three and one the signal integrity from ram slot four has to pass through all of those before it gets to the cpu so that will change the varying of the heights and 
contact points and all that before it gets to the CPU, which will change a lot. If you just have RAM slot 2 and 4, or 1 and 2, or it's A and B technically, what they'll classify them as is A and B, and then you'll have dual rank, which will go up to 4 RAM slots here, and that will be 1, 2, or A and B, and then you got A, B, and then A1 and A2 for 1 and 3, and then B1 and B2 for 2 and 4. The more RAM slots, again, you put in, the worse the sig signal integrity will be. So interference of sorts. Um, they've had people complain about like your GPU causing issues with your RAM and all that too. That's not really the case. Um, the RAM just strictly goes from the RAM to the CPU for integrity. And then it'll just splice off whatever it wants or whatever the CPU or the CPU and GPU will talk and then the, the CPU will talk to the RAM on what it wants and then it'll give it to the CPU and the CPU will give it back to the GPU and then there's a lot that goes on just to play games or even just record or anything like that the RAM does a lot for it um, it doesn't really matter if you have just two channels or four channels or eight channels of quad memory or it doesn't matter what you need to know is that number four is your best slot. Your last slot of your motherboard will be the best slot for overclocking. But having one RAM stick in isn't exactly that great. It doesn't matter if it's a dual rank 128 gig RAM stick. Just one of them is not enough for... Uh, the multi-use of a PC nowadays. So you'll definitely want to have two RAM sticks at least in RAM slot 2 and 4 and in 2 and 4 you can overclock these more than all four together and that's due to the signal integrity again. Remember RAM slot 4 you have a straight line of traces that go straight to the CPU. RAM slot 3 gets warped. Well it's the same distance but the signal integrity technically is worse just to the fact that it has to go through these traces in a different pattern and there's interferences of different signals that could affect these uh, traces that go to the CPU. There's a lot that goes on with RAM but for this test here RAM slot 2 and 4 will have a better chance of giving you better lows than all four just due to the fact that the in, uh, signal integrity is worse with all four put together going to the CPU. Now this does look like a, it doesn't look very nice here but you get what I'm saying. RAM slot 4 is the best even though it's the farthest distance away it is the best due to the fact it has a straight path. There's a straight path. See how the path works? But the path is technically going from slot 4 to slot 3 to slot 2 to slot 1 to the CPU. Right? It's still a straight path. Due to the fact it doesn't have to go up into this uh, region of where the RAM will be. Because that's what would happen. It would have to go up into that RAM slot back down. Up into that RAM slot back down. Up into the RAM slot back down to the CPU. Instead it's going to go here. It's going to hit the... Um, there's technically traces that go into each of these spots here with the little pins and all that. It'll just go to those pins and it won't have to go any farther than those pins and travel to the pin and travel to the pin and travel. That's the best method for RAM in any PC is RAM slot two and four if you have four. And if you just want to use one just to overclock it as far as you can, RAM slot four will be your best. So remember, RAM slot 4 is your best. It may not uh, seem like the farthest slot is the best, but it is just due to the fact that the signal integrity is better. Remember, RAM slot 1, you're going to have a lot of zigs and zags into the traces to make up the exact same length as RAM slot 4 to the CPU. 
And that is why our lows are going to be better with just two RAM sticks versus four. Due to the fact that signal integrity from RAM slot four to one is going to be chopped up and spliced throughout the other ones same thing with three three has to go from three two and one and two has to go from two and one and to the cpu we will get into another video about quad ranks dual ranks and um the ram sticks on how they are split up into single and dual rank um single-sided dual rank, dual sided, dual rank, dual sided, single rank, and single sided, dual rank, and single sided, single rank. We'll go through those in a different video. But for this video here, we're just, I just want to show you, this is what motherboards have to go through. This is why uh, people that make motherboards and that, they don't technically make enough money in my opinion, because they have to go through all of these different kind of changes. And then now we got cam cam it's cam 2 but cam dell came out with cam ram good old dell um i have a video that i'm coming out with soon about cam ram um the genius that worked over at dell that came up with this it's just a ram sticks instead of having a whole bunch of ram sticks you're gonna have one big plate of ram that has very very small contact points underneath it just like a CPU so LGA land grid array is now going to your RAM your RAM will now be a land grid array just like Intel and now new AMD CPUs are land grid array as well your RAM will also be that which is better because now instead of all these slots that are farther back it's just going to be all onto one slot and you can get faster speeds and better timings out of it in theory uh, you should be able to get faster speeds and better timings uh, with it the only problem with this is the heat a lot of heat it's gonna be a lot of heat and just this little package die instead of going through four different RAM sticks that each have usually their own coolers now you have to worry about cooling this big old plate that has all of these chips on it and you can still have 128 gigs of DDR5 uh, same as uh, your RAM sticks but it's gonna be on this little cam it's just gonna be on this little die and um, you gotta have to figure a way to cool that die to get um, to keep your signal integrity. So as soon as you start warming something up, the traces or um, you can go to um, a science class on YouTube and search up uh, superconductors and stuff like that. That'll help you understand uh, the temperatures for PCs uh, matter. So the colder you can get uh, the PC without bringing in any kind of moisture or anything like that would be bit better than having a hotter PC. And that's just due to the fact that everything will be tighter up into it. Um, you can put more power. Technically the power will increase without you increasing the power the more you cool something. So you can just put in 12 volts of power into something and you cool down um, the lines of current to it and you can technically increase the power just by cooling down the the lines that go to it and that will help uh, your signal integrity due to the fact that you can just put it will just allow more voltage or more power to be allowed into it without even adjusting anything just the temperature will help uh, signal integrity that way um, again, I will be going through another video. Uh, I've been working on a video now for a couple weeks uh, trying to get as much detail into as possible since uh, Cam Memory came out in 2022 or 2023. Don't quote me on that. Again, it's all in my video. I haven't worked on it in the past week. So uh, All I know is Dell. Good old Dell was the one that came up with it. Uh, I believe the guy's name is Thomas. Do not quote me again, but he's an engineer that came up with CAM, not CAM2, with CAM memory, which is just a compression um, style module, uh, mo module 
uh, that you put onto your motherboard. Uh, it's been implemented into laptops. That's where they came up with the idea is being able to put more RAM into a laptop without having to put more RAM slots in because with a laptop the RAM slots are just you'd ha you have to stack them and it's no good like you'll have a really thick laptop with 128 gigs so there's no point so they came up with cam which is just a flat RAM stick basically with a compression uh, module that the that, that gets stuck on your motherboard um, but the signal integrity should be better. I don't have any cam memory. Uh, I believe Asus. I'm sorry, MSI. I know MSI came out with a board that has uh, cam memory, but it hasn't been tested. I haven't seen any tests with the cam memory. All I know is that they're saying, "Oh, it's 128. You can get 128 gigs of DDR5 into this little package." You have to be able to cool that. Remember, you got four sticks that are air cooled because they are spaced out. This is all, all 128 gigs on one die, and they're saying 8,000 mega transfers at 128 gigs. Like that will be very, very hot. That, that would probably be close to 50 to 70 watts of cooling that you would just need on that before. Like you just need the cooling. You need to be able to cool that to keep everything constant stable signal integrity as best as it can be yes this is the best method but you have to be able to cool it uh, I will be making uh, I will be I'm currently editing a video for the cam memory so uh, let me know in the comment section below if you want uh, me to go through a quick uh, tutorial of the cam memory um, I do have a video that I've been working on it's very it's gonna be very long and very detailed um, it's just I don't have enough information in my opinion just to be throwing it out there for cam memory and if I can see that more people are using it and or um, companies are investing their time and or money into it then I will think about doing a better video on it let me know in the comment section below if you want me to go through the ram again uh, about the signal integrity there's tons of videos out there with that know about the signal integrity better than i do for me i do a, hard, a lot of hardcore overclocking so I, i've always taken into account you know your last slot and all that and then you got the just a straight path it's technically just a straight path to the cpu and that is the best method to get higher overclocking speed with tighter timings and ram it is just going with the best slots which is ram uh, ram slot 2 or uh, ram slot uh, b and b2 or ram slot 2 and 4 and that will be your best sorry ram slot a and RAM slot B in the second channel. That would be your best slot. Um, that's just better for signal integrity. With the cam, like I said, uh, the cam memory has less points, less high points. So instead of it going through one, two, three, and four points of contacts, like it literally has to go for like up, up, up up and through and then you got the traces that go to it as well remember all the traces that have to power it the signal integrity changes throughout each and every single slot due to the fact that each of these the last one especially is the best one because it's just a straight path and every other one follows the same distance as the last one which will change in the height change in the uh, they just do zigzags like I said they just do zigzags to change the the length of it without changing the actual length of the trace you can search you can search it up on uh, Google to search up RAM traces on motherboards and you'll see that they have the squiggly lines on the first uh, less squiggly lines on the second last on the third and the fourth is usually just a straight line you can search it that way or you can look at your own motherboard and it will you, if you shine the light a certain way you can see the traces you can see the traces and you can just look for yourself 
and that will show you about signal integrity in that as well. Um, the more you cool down something, the better signal integrity it has, just to the fact that it, you will have more power to use, to utilize, without overheating anything. And just cooling down something, like superconductors and that, you can just cool it down and it will automatically give you more power just due to the fact that the heat traveling through the traces and that will change like it will just degrade the the power to the last one here or the first one here because it has goes up and down up and down up and down all these traces are very close all those warm up and are so close to each other that by the time it gets to the last one it's very warm and that's only to the first one right that makes sense if it doesn't make sense, I'll make a more clear video. I will, I will show you all the uh, the websites and places that I go to just to show you all of the um, the cooling down effects, the heating up, the signal integrity, like an actual um, scope to actually show you the actual signal integrity. Uh, another person you can go to about signal integrity is. Uh, uh, actually hardcore overclocking or buildzoid buildzoid's great uh, he has his own machine he complains a lot about uh, he doesn't have enough equipment in that he has more than enough equipment to show you signal integrity and how heat can change things adding more capacitors uh, onto your motherboards or and or GPUs more or less GPUs because you want to pump in more power and have better like as a clean of a signal integrity as possible so adding more uh, capacitors to your GPU will help clean up some of those stutters and you can add on as much capacitors as you want it, it's not going to change anything uh, it just will hopefully give you better signal integrity by the time it hits to uh, wherever it needs to go it could be the memories or it could be to the core uh, more or less to the core for signal integrity because the core can be very uh, temperamental especially like with the Maxwell GPUs Again, if you like these kind of videos, like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to get her done.